Hello, my name is Rossella and if you're watching this video it's because you want to test your knowledge about the musical clefs. If you want to revise this topic, click on the link in the description below or up here. You will find a direct link to the playlist of four useful videos in which you can find all you need to know about the musical clefs. If you're ready to go and confident enough, enjoy it! This video is in two sections. In the first one, you will see all the 20 questions one after another. In the second half, I answer the questions and I explain the answer as well. The only thing you need to do this test is a blank paper and a pencil. If you want, you can download the PDF version of this quiz. So you can do it on your printed paper or digitally on your tablet. You will find the direct link in the description below and if you have any problems please drop me a message or leave a comment. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel too to become the first one to watch the videos as soon as they are released. Also like and share this video to help your friends become theory virtuosi. Now ready to go? Good luck! Question 1. What is a musical clef? A symbol, a group of notes, a music score. Question 2. Where do we write the clef? At the beginning of each piece. When we need it. At the beginning of each stave. Question 3. Why do we need a clef? To play better? To name the notes? To enjoy the music? Question 4. How many clefs are there in music? 7 2 5 Question 5. How many clefs do you remember? Say their names and get one point each if correct. Question 6. What is the other name of the treble clef? C clef, bass, G clef. Question 7. Why do we call it G clef? It starts on the second line, G. It looks like a G. It sits on the first line. Question 8. What is the other name of the bass clef? C clef, B clef, F clef. Question 9. How does it tell us the position of F on the stave? We know it. It starts on the fourth line and has two dots around it. It is a backward C, so it is a C clef. Question 10. Which of the following statements is true? Bass clef equals treble clef plus one. Bass clef equals C clef. Bass clef equals treble clef plus two. 
Question 11. Which one is the only clef with dots? Treble clef? Bass clef? Any of the C clefs? Question 12. Which of the following statements is true? Alto clef equals treble clef plus one. Alto clef equals treble clef. Alto clef equals treble clef plus two. Question 13. What C is indicated by the C clefs? Any C? Middle C? It doesn't indicate C. Question 14. How can we find middle C through the C clef symbol? It is in the line where the two bubbles meet. We count. We see where the dots are. Question 15. Which of the following statements is true? Tenor clef equals base clef minus one. Tenor clef equals Alto clef. Tenor clef equals treble clef minus one. Question 17. Finish the memory. If the pitch you want to know. Play using a bow. Middle C, are you above or below? There's no such thing as a memory. Question 17. If the pitch you want to know, middle C, are you above or below? What does he mean? Compare the position of the note with middle C. Middle C can be above or below the stave. Count from middle C above the stave. Question 18. The baritone clef can be written either as an F or a C clef. True, false, the baritone clef is a G clef. Question 19. We can write music without clefs. True, false, we can choose. Question 20. The clefs never change throughout a piece. True, false, only in certain cases. Question 1. What is a musical clef? A symbol. And these are the symbols of the possible clefs. In fact, in my first video, 1A, I say a clef is the symbol that we write at the beginning of each stave. And this gives us the answer to our next question. Question number two. Where do we write the clef? At the beginning? of each stave.
Question number three. Why do we need a clef? To name the notes. Exactly, because we need a clef to name the notes. In fact, without a clef, it's not possible to give a note a name. So in other words, no clefs, no notes. Question number four. How many clefs are there in music? Seven. Seven, like the note names. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, si. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Seven notes and seven clefs. There is a reason for that. And the clefs are treble, soprano, mezzo soprano, alto, tenor, baritone and bass. Now, try to remember the musical clefs in order. Treble, soprano, mezzo soprano, alto, tenor, baritone and bass. Treble and bass are at the beginning and at the end. In the middle, there are the five C clefs. Soprano, mezzo soprano, alto, tenor and baritone. If you learn them by heart, in order, you will more easily recognise them on the stave. This is because each of them occupies a specific place on a stave. In the soprano clef, the bubbles meet on the first line. In the mezzo soprano, on the second. Alto, tenor and baritone. So five lines and five clefs. So again, soprano, mezzo soprano, alto, tenor and baritone. And I stress that because sometimes in the exam papers I see that candidates confuse the alto and tenor clef. And this, of course, costs you marks. Shall we try to avoid that? Question five. How many clefs do you remember? Let's say them again. Treble, soprano, mezzo soprano, alto, tenor, baritone and bass. If you got them all right, you should have seven points in this question. Try to say their names again. Treble, soprano, mezzo soprano, alto, tenor, baritone and bass. Question six. What is the other name of the treble clef? G clef. And in fact, one of the slides in my videos is this in which you can see that the treble clef starts on the second line where G is. And the bass clef, and this answers the next questions, starts on the fourth line and this is the line of F. Back to the questions. Question seven. Why do we call it G clef? Because it starts on the second line, the line of G. Speaking of that, do you remember the first memo rhyme? Draw it from the second line and the treble clef is fine. That's useful. Question eight. What is the other name of the bass clef? F clef. And why? Question nine. How does it tell us the position of F on the stave? because it starts on the fourth line and has two dots around it. And how about the second memo rhyme about the bass clef? Do you remember it? Try. The bass clef has dots. The others have not. Let's have a look at them one more time, shall we? Treble clef, G. G clef. Bass clef, F, F clef, and dots. Question 10. Which of the following statements is true? Bass clef equals treble clef plus 2. Do you like maths? 
This is something that I called in the video 1D, transposition by eye. It works like maths. Instead of reading the note as it would be in the treble clef, we add two notes above. Easy. Question 11. Which one is the only clef with dots? Bass clef. The bass clef has dots. The others have not. Question 12. Which of the following statements is true? Alto clef equals treble clef plus one. Let's have a look at maths again. Si becomes do. Do equals re. Sol, la. And la, si. One above. Question 13. What C is indicated by the C clefs? Middle C. And look at this. Three clefs on three different lines for the same note. Middle C. Question 14. How can we find middle C through the C clef symbol? It is on the line where the two bubbles meet. And if you want to revise this, watch the video 1C relating to the C clefs. Question 15. Which of the following statements is true? Tenor clef equals treble clef minus one. And let's compare it with maths again. So every time we take one note out, so C becomes La, Do, Si, Sol equals Fa, and A equals G. Question 16. Finish the memorime if the pitch you want to know. Middle C, are you above or below? Did you get it right? Here it is for you. If the pitch you want to know, middle C, are you above or below? Question 17. If the pitch you want to know, middle C, are you above or below? What does he mean? Compare the position of the note with middle C. This is also another important and useful memorime because sometimes in the exam papers you are asked to compare the octaves and it is important to realise exactly where the original pitch is so you can compare the second one. So sometimes in the exam papers I see that candidates confuse the octaves so they write a note an octave higher or lower and this also costs marks. Shall we try not to lose marks for that? Question 18. The baritone clef can be written either as an F or a C clef. True. The baritone clef has two symbols. One is the C clef symbol and the other one is the F clef symbol. Of course, one of them is easier to read, so it's a little bit more frequent in scores. Question 19. We can write music without clefs. False. Of course not. We said that already. No clefs, no notes. Question 20. The clefs never change throughout a piece. False. This was a bit difficult, I think, because I haven't mentioned this in my videos. Can we have multiple clefs in the same piece? Yes, we can. Let me show it to you. This example is taken from one of the most recent ABRSM Grade 2 piano books. As you can see, on the left-hand stave, there is a small treble clef. 
This means that all the notes after this clef must be read in treble clef. So the first note after that is F sharp, far sharp. And look at the second line, left hand stave. There is another small bass clef. And this means that from there onwards, we should go back to reading in bass clef again. So the first note after that is low G, sol. I hope this video helped you revise and improve your knowledge about the musical clefs. You can always rewatch it from time to time to refresh your memory about it. And you can always pause and think. And of course, leave me a comment so I can improve too. Thank you for watching. Happy music. Ciao.